Well, hello everyone. I'm Mr. Weber, um, or professor, whatever. Well, whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, like I said in my announcement earlier, I'm sorry I haven't been able to do the um, recordings for you guys. It's been kind of crazy, um, but doing it now. So, um, without further ado, let's get to the two PowerPoints and start talking about your curriculum. Um, if you experience some issues with the, um, the test, the syllabus test, yes, there are projects. There's two, <clears throat> excuse me, allergies and smoke. Um, you have a midterm project and then you have a final project. Um, so you do have two of them. Uh, I won't hold that against you, against your score, I'll up your score if you miss those questions. Okay, sorry about that. And we do not have a physical in-person class uh, due to COVID-19. However, um, if you want to do Zooms with me, I can do them in the evenings. Um, it's kind of a little bit about myself. Uh, I am a middle school um, teacher, former director of engineering and robotics and computer science for UK Unified. Now I'm back in the trenches teaching middle schoolers. Schooling, okay. Um, however, and I teach both at Mendocino College and at Santa Rosa JC. So kind of busy, got my you know, fire, for the lack of better words, in a whole bunch of different areas. Um, and I also still real estate on the side. So I'm super busy. Uh, with lack of better words, um, let's get to this. And if you have any questions, shoot me an email or message on Canvas. I'll be checking it daily. If for the exception of Saturdays and Sundays, uh, that's family time. I treasure it. I hope you do too. And uh, yeah, okay. So I'll start sharing my screen. I want to introduce something to everyone. Um, this is a program called Brackets. If you want to use Brackets, it's B-R-A-C-K-E-T-S. Um, it is PC friendly. Uh, Mac, it has some issues, but it does work for Apple. Um, however, it's not the platform we're using. We're using REPL.IT, but if you have issues with REPL, you can literally just <clears throat> do this on um, brackets or another HTML web builder and then um, email it to me or attach it to the assignments that I post on Canvas and it'll be, be done and over with, okay? So if you are submitting on REPL.IT, um, for the Canvas-driven assignments, they're the same as REPL. Um, just put in the note saying, submitted on REPL. And I'll take a look, I'll go back and forth, and I'll have two printouts, one for Canvas, one for REPL, make sure that people are doing what they're supposed to be doing, okay? Um, you're gonna have just a few quizzes, and then uh, I'm gonna waive the midterm quiz and final quiz. I'm just gonna have you guys do projects because I find that they are way more beneficial because it's real time experience, not just do you know the, the knowledge. You know, it's like, can you demonstrate the knowledge is what I'm really looking for. Uh, pretty easy going, do your work, get it in on time. Uh, if you need an extension because of kind of like what I've been dealing with the last week, uh, just let me know. And I have no problems helping you guys out because I know you're awesome. And I know you're probably going through a lot just like I am. So. Let's do the PowerPoints, <clears throat> get this done. All right, scroll up. Okay, so in chapter one, we talk about uh, web servers. So what is HTML? Well, HTML is the hypertext markup language, which is a standardized system for tagging text files to achieve font, color, graphics, and hyperlink effects on the World Wide Web pages, okay? Uh, basically, it's the backbone. So HTML, is a language that's created to build web pages. The markup language itself is a language that uses tags to annotate the information in a document. And a tag is a synthetic element in a markup language that annotate the information in the document itself. So what is the World Wide Web, may you ask, if you're not sure? Well, it's an infrastructure of information combined with the network software used to access it. Now, the World Wide Web is made up of like billions and billions and billions and probably even more than that of web pages. And a web page is a document that contains the references of various kinds of data. 
numerical as well as text. Now, in order for all this to work, you have to have links. So links are the connection between one page and another. Now, <clears throat> there's three different things that we need to cover. A website, that's a collection of related websites or web pages, okay? A web browser, and this is where people get messed up between a browser and a website, okay? A browser is a software tool that retrieves and displays the pages. So that's like Google Chrome, that's Firefox, um, there's a few others. I can't, I'm, I'm temporarily brain dead right now. It's been a very long day. And web servers are the computer setups that respond to the requests for websites. That's where all the websites are stored, okay? So just think of those giant computer data spaces. Now the World Wide Web, in order for you to access, you need to know the URL. So the URL is a standard way of specifying the location of a web page containing the host name, back forward slash, and the file itself. And that's why when you store on like godaddy.com is one of the um, host servers, okay? You're uploading onto theirs and you're able to purchase your actual web address and then you own that web address for however long the contract is, okay? Now a search engine, this is where people get messed up between web browser and search engine. Search engines are the websites that help you find other websites. So that would be Google, Lycos, Yahoo, Bing, um, you know what, even Pinterest because you're still looking up various web websites that are just linked on there. Um, Amazon also has certain things, but that's more of uh, e-commerce, okay? So there's tons and tons of search engines. Do a search on a search engine for a search engine, okay? And it'll blow your mind how many there are. Okay, now let me scroll down a little bit more. So HTML5 and CSS. So HTML5 is the current version of the HTML standard. It was released back in 2011. I know, for tech, that's a long time. But it's still supported by all browsers. And if you're thinking about doing web development, guess what? You need to learn HTML5. That's your skeleton. If you want an analogy, think of it as a human being. HTML5 is literally your muscular, your nervous system, as well as your um, skeletal system and that is like the basis and CSS well CSS is all the pretty stuff it's like your skin okay think of it that way so an HTML document structure the entire document enclosed has to be between the HTML and closing HTML tag if you don't have those not gonna work right guys uh, the head structure that's the header that's within the opening head and closing head it contains the information about the document itself such as the title, titles displayed in the tab. The body section is the actual web page and information that is displayed on your screen. That's everything that's important that you want displayed for a consumer to look at. Now the browser. The browser uses HTML tags together with the CSS styling information to determine how your web page should be displayed. If you don't have CSS, it's going to be boring. It's just going to be regular size 12 um, font. I believe sans serif is the actual default or serif. Um, <clears throat> and it's just, there's going to be no pictures, no this, no that. It's just boring. Oh, it's like something back from like the early 80s when the internet really first started. God. So CSS makes everything beautiful and then when you couple it with JavaScript or Bootstrap or one of the other programming languages that make it more user-friendly and interactive, bam, you got an awesome website. So just think, you got lots to learn. Well, this is just the training wheels. So HTML and CSS it ignores the way the formats of the HTML document using the carriage returns and extra spaces and blank lines. It avoids all that. It doesn't care about that. It just looks at what your actual tags are. It takes into account the width and the height of the browser window. A lot of it automatically fits. However, there are ways that if you code it, it will not come, that will not happen. It reformats the content to fit the browser window. 
but not always, especially if you're going mobile. Okay, you have to have make sure it's mobile friendly within the head. Here are some basic elements. P P tag is paragraph. Okay, uh, horizontal rule is HR. It's a big ruler across a big line. UL is unordered list. OL is ordered list. It's numbered. Okay, LI is list item. So anytime you do a UL or an OL, you're going to need the LIs in between them to create the list items. Otherwise, it's not going to work right. H1 is a big header. H6 is the smallest header. Now an attribute. <clears throat> an attribute is a part of a tag that provides additional information about the element itself. The form is attribute minus name equals the value. So CSS, see style equals text hyphen line colon is center. So it's saying the center is going to be for the alignment for the text within the style. And this is going to be inline. Okay, you can, um, when you do a main page CSS page, this will not be style, that's for inline or if it's uh, internal. Uh, we're really, we'll cover it, but we're not gonna be really learning it because it's going away probably at the end of 2020, 2021. So image source, <clears throat> image source, that's where you use to input your images into your website. So this is the tag that you would use, and then this is just a file location within your computer. Now, if you're pulling from the internet, that's free, pictures freeware, you're gonna have to put the URL that's gonna go here, okay? Um, when we talk about pathways in the next um, PowerPoint, then I'll tell you how to do it if you have to go up a few folders, okay? Um, anchor hyper reference, uh, oops, there is something missing here, and I just caught it because you guys are awesome, okay? And I'll save this, all right, here we go. <clears throat> so an anchor hyper reference is a hyperlink or URL. So this is gonna be the link itself. So this is right here, oops. There we go, now I'll resave it, okay? And it's gonna be displayed as Google it, okay? And it'll take you to google.com. I'll demonstrate that live for you in a little bit. So now you're gonna to go to REPL.IT. Make sure you sign up, it is free. Most of you have already signed into my class. Use the link that I posted in Canvas. Um, turn to page 17 and read the directions, kind of follow it through. I'm gonna post a practice one so you guys can mess around with it, okay? I'll let you download the files from the textbook. <clears throat> There's a lot of them. Um, so you can just kind of play around with it. However, the assignment for assignment one is you have to find <clears throat> my mistakes. You have to find things that I changed. Starts on page 22 and it goes to page 32, okay? It is on REPL. We're gonna avoid the class discussion and do assignment one as your homework. So I'm gonna close this. Now we're gonna to go to the second presentation. Okay, hypertext markup language. Woo woo! Here we go. Overview, you're gonna be working with links and paths. So as I talk to you, an anchor hyper reference is a link. The link goes in between these wonderful quotation marks. Now the title is gonna be the title that's displayed in a little bubble when you go to click it. Okay, the description is what's displayed on the website and this is your closing anchor. <clears throat> if you don't have this here and this here, it won't work. Also, you need to have that, that one has the closing. Title, you technically don't need it, it's just very helpful, okay? Um, so let me just demo it really fast for you. I'm just gonna go to Google. I cannot type today whatsoever. This is not okay.
<clears throat> okay, here we go. Save it for this. REPL, you don't need to save it. Do, 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 do. Okay, see this? Right there, bam, there it is. I can click it and it takes me to Google. You guys see that? So, I'm gonna close that, take a look. I added the anchor hyper reference, I added the equal sign, the quotations, the full URL, I added the title, it says Google search, clicked me to go to Google's was displayed, and then I closed it. So, the title, let me show you again, to make sure that you understand. Title is not fully needed, but it is helpful, because if I don't click it, look, it pops up Google search, and it tells you down at the very bottom right here, it says google.com, okay? So that's what that is. Okay, so we just went over that. These are different examples. You can play around with whatever you want with the practice one. All right, so you have inline elements, which are inline like this. Um, they have no line breaks. They are associated with the um, flow horizontally using soft line breaks when reaching out the present element, that, <clears throat> excuse me, without reaching to the parent element, okay? Block level elements, it's place inline breaks in order for it to, after the, the element, such as stacking them vertically on top of each other. It's up to you on what you do eventually for your nav bar. Now let's talk about paths. There's a relative and absolute path. These are pathways for attaching files, whether it's images, links to other web pages, or um, if you need like to link a document to, to something, it, these are very, very helpful. Or a PDF, okay, this is how you do it. Now, let's just say an absolute path. It specifies a precise location within the computer's entire folder structure. So let's just say you need to figure out exactly where it's going. Your web page is somewhere else, okay? You need to say C drive or whatever it is, colon, forward slash course, which is here, and then the BCIT, so that's the next folder, forward slash intro dot HTML, which is this one right here, okay? That's how you link to a specific absolute path. Here's a different one, okay? If you have more folders. And you can do it indefinitely, honestly, and it'll just take you to the right one. You just have to figure out the pathway. It's really important. Now, a relative path specifies the file location in relation to the location of the current document. So, let's just say the next one, if they're in the same folder, bam, all you have to do is just name it. Where you normally put URL, Okay, you can just put the file name if it's in the same folder. That simple, but it gets a little crazier. Now, it's not, okay? So it's right here. You're gonna have to make sure that it takes it from the BCIT. So all you have to do, you don't have to do C drive or any, any of that stuff, okay? You just do the next subfolder, which would be class one, and then forward slash whatever file. But let's just say you have to back up and you have to go into a different one. What do you do? Guess what? You have to do the dot dot. Okay, so it's here. So you're in the BCIT folder. You have to do dot dot, which tells it to back up. Look in the other folders, okay? And then it's right there. Okay, and if you have to tell it to go into a different folder that's after that, you do dot dot and then you specify the folder and then you find whatever file it is. So internal links, really easy. If you're in the same folder, it's a relative path, bam, you just name the file and it goes right there. You can name document fragments, okay? So let's just say you have a really long document, all right? And you create an anchor tab and you type in name and you e give it a name within the quotation marks. Well, within a different portion of that document, you add a hyper reference. 
Well, you can add the name to it and it will go right to that section. It makes it a lot easier. All right, uh, creating titles for your, your links. We just already talked about it. You add the title tag right here within the, anchor, the first anchor, opening anchor tag and you give it a name and then it'll pop up when you go to click it. Changing browser window and target attributes. Uh, okay, so a target. One thing I didn't cover. I want to cover it really, really quick with you guys. Okay, here we go. So let's do another. Let's do another. Actually, we can do this one. Tile there, and then we're going to create target equals, and then blank. Okay, I'm going to save. I'm going to go there. Now, if I don't have target, when I click this, what did it do? It changed that current tab to Google. Now I'm going to do this. I'm gonna go click it and it opened a new tab. So if you guys see, look at this. I'm gonna open it up so you guys can see a little bit better. Oops. I don't like Zoom. Okay, right there. See, there, I clicked it and it opens another one because the target is a blank tab. That's what's really, really, really important, okay? So I'm gonna close those, close that. And we're gonna have to eventually move this around. All right, <clears throat> oh, there we go. All right, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Target attribute. And, okay, if you need to create an email linking address, you add an anchor hyper reference and then you literally do this, okay? You do mail to and then colon and whatever the web address is or the email address, and then it will send it to you. It will open up your, um, do an email for that, okay? Uh, for right here, the dot, 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 um, that would be what's displayed. Remember, whatever goes between the opening anchor, anchor um, hyper-reference and the closing anchor is what is displayed on the web page. So you can say um, email here or whatever you need to do, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Now, let's go over the assignments, assignment one, assignment two, okay? Assignment one is pretty easy. Close this. Oop, let's assignment two. We don't want that. Back to classroom. All right. Assignment one. Edit assignment, just so you guys can see. Now it says follow the directions in chapter one of your textbook. It is located on page 22 through 32. Find what I changed on the web page and fix it. Okay, so this is what you're fixing. You're looking at everything. Now, I am a stinker. I really like to mess with people. So you need to find what I changed literally from the very top all the way to the very bottom. Now, I didn't mess with your main anchoring tags, but I did mess with anything within the styles. I messed with any of the tags, okay? And I changed some of the tags. Instead of it being like an H something, or I maybe have added in uh, a different element to like say um, a type of text, I made it different somehow. Um, you have to find it and fix it. So that's a fun challenge. Uh, it's due August 30th, okay? And then all you have to do is when you finish it, it you'll right around in this area, it'll say I'm done or submit or turn in or one of those and then just click that, okay? And it'll be done. Uh, done, all right. Now, graphs, assignment two, okay. Now I've already set up the met meta character and all that, we'll, we'll discuss that later. I also have your uh, JavaScript and your, um, 
cascading style sheet already set up for you guys. You know, I'm trying to make it a little bit easier. Just, you know, times suck right now. And I want you guys just to really enjoy this class and actually learn something and not be super stressed. So let's look at assignment two. It's long, or it looks long. It's really not. Your assignment is to create a website in your own account on repl.ed or your own HTML web building software like Brackets. Okay, you can submit digitally or you can just say it submitted in on uh, REPL. Um, so let's just actually get down to what needs to be done. Um, you need to cite your sources. I want you to do it on the back end. Okay, so it could be um, just just say pulled from um, uh, excuse me Wikipedia or something like that. If you need to, um, we'll we'll get there a little bit further on how to really cite your sources. Uh, it's it's just fun. Okay, now here's the big thing for assignment two. You're going to be using HTML with an external cascading style sheet. It's gonna be for future assignments. You don't need to worry about it right now. You need one H1 tag, four P4, P tags, okay, for paragraphs. A minimum of three images, you can pull them off of Google or your own computer, and a minimum, minimum of three hyper-references, linking to live web pages that can help explain the topic. You have to find something that you like, okay? Um, I like cats, you know, I, I, I don't know. Uh, it's something, I have four cats in my house. It's kind of crazy at times. Uh, my grandmother's cat is living with us too because she's here because of the Cloverdale fire. So here, here's what we'll do. I'll kind of give you guys a hint, all right? I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go to bracket so I don't mess up your guys' assignment. Okay. There's one. We'll paste this. So, one H1. Oh, I need to close the H1. Oh, it already closed it for me. That's so nice. My web page. Bam. Okay, there we go. Four P4 P tags. Okay, so I'm going to delete this. And then I'm going to. Now, I can do this, watch this. Copy, paste. Okay, now I just need you to type something in there that you like, talk about cats, pull off information from the, the internet that you think is interesting, if you like video games, if you like movie, whatever. I don't care. Then, minimum of three images. Okay, well, cool. So, let's do this. Let's do image source, IMG, SR, SRC equals, and then now if you're pulling from a file from your computer, it's the file location. See PowerPoint 2 for that, okay? But if you're not, then all you have to do is just put the URL. So I adore cats. So I'm going to use my secondary screen really fast and I'm going to pull up um, cute cat pictures, okay? I'm gonna yank it over here so you guys can see. Aren't they adorable? If you're a cat person, uh, you're awesome. If you're not a cat person, that's still okay. So, I mean, you can click one. Now, see how it clicked and it popped up right here? It's best to actually go to the website. Oh, Pinterest, not doing that. Um, Pinterest is very difficult. Well, this praying kitty is kind of cute, okay. So we're going to right click, we're gonna copy the image address. Do not copy the image, it doesn't help. Now we're gonna try something. Maybe it's gonna be long, maybe it's not. It's not, all right. So now I'm gonna add something. You don't need to do this yet, but it's always recommended. Alt equals and then quotation marks. And you say cute praying Kitty cat, kitty car. Oh my God, I'm tired. All right, so what happens is if this image doesn't work, it will show, it'll type cute praying kitty cat. 
in the actual website if the image is broken. Okay, so we're gonna save it, we're gonna input it, we're gonna see if it works. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about when it breaks. Oh, uh, look at that. That's so adorable. Oh my God, it makes me sick. So cute. Okay, now what happens if it doesn't work? Well, let's get rid of the dot com right there. I save it, I post it because I made a mistake. Watch this. Cute praying kitty cat right there, right there, and the image is broken. Can I see that? So I'm gonna fix that. So you're gonna need three, or you're gonna need quite a few of those, okay? And then three hyper references. Well, guess what? You guys need to do three of those. Live website, don't use Google, find something else, okay? They can go to Amazon for something that you think is really cool and that I should try to buy. Um, you know, stuff like that, whatever. Um, Pinterest, things that are interesting to you. That's what you need to do, okay? This is what I'm asking you to do. So if you guys have any questions, please, please, please email me. I will be checking daily for the exception of after 3 p.m. on Friday. Um, I am going camping with my fiance. We planned it for like eight months. Um, hopefully it's not gonna be too smoky. So. If you email after 3 p.m. on Friday, I won't answer until we get back to Sunday night. And I might not even answer until Monday, okay? So that's it. I hope that everyone was able to follow along. Um, and good luck. If you have questions, please shoot me an email. If you had problems with the syllabus test because of the project question, Shoot me an email like a lot of you have. I'll adjust your grades. Okay. I hope you guys have a good day. Thank you much for taking my class. And I'm going to work really, really hard to make sure that um, the delays were not like what happened earlier because of all well, the fires. Okay. And I hope everyone's safe. And I hope all your family is safe. Bye, guys. Thank you. And take care.